Pastor Jim Doherty, Power to Change Crusades. Today I want to talk to you about what it means to be a Christian and how we're called to live out our lives for Jesus Christ. I was reading in John chapter 8 when the woman was caught in adultery, the religious leaders who were sinners just as well as we all are sinners, they brought that woman that was caught in adultery, but they failed to bring the man that was also caught in adultery. And they were just as sinful as she was. She committed adultery in the very act, but they were committing a unrighteous judgment. And therefore, I'm sure they had bitterness and rage and anger going on too, wanting to stone her to death. There's so much in that story packed within John chapter 8. But the Holy Spirit put on my heart that as Christians, we need to be different. We need to be living our lives out for Jesus Christ as he calls us to in the scripture. So in the next couple of messages, I'm going to be focusing just on that. What does the Bible say about walking with God? What does the Bible say about the Christian life? How we are to live in this present age as believers. As I do so, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, speak to our hearts. And I pray for every person listening that your Holy Spirit would speak to every person. And if there's those that are listening that do not know Jesus Christ, I pray that today would be the day that they would put their faith in Jesus and become born again and become a Christian. We thank you for what you will do in this message. We ask that you would grow us and grow us ever so close to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So how should we live out our Christian lives today? The first thing I want to share with you is you got to know Jesus. You got to put your faith in Christ. You got to repent of your sins to know Jesus Christ and then follow him in obedience. And so the following passages of scripture and points I'd like to encourage you to look at and to really reflect on as what it truly means to walk out that Christian life. First thing that I want you to see is a Christian is called to deny themselves and deny themselves daily and be crucified with Jesus Christ. As I read out of Matthew chapter 16, the words of Jesus, look what he says here in verse 24. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my name's sake will find it. For what would it profit a man to gain this whole world but lose his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? I want you to be recognizing here that the Christian should be denying themselves, not living for their selfish ambitions or their selfish desires, but living for the Lord Jesus, not living in sin, not practicing sin, but recognizing that God wants us to live a righteous and holy life through him and that takes self-denial and that takes a lot of humbleness and prayer and obedience and so Jesus says here if anyone wants to come after me let him deny himself take up the cross and follow me because if you try to save your life you're gonna lose it but if you lose your life for his name's sake you're going to find true life because you're going to find the life that he designed for you as you came to know him as your Lord and Savior. A life that is worthy of the calling on your life to walk in obedience, to walk in blessing. And God wants you to recognize that we can live an abundant life in him. But there's challenges in the Christian life. You know, there are some preaching out there that, that they make the Christian life look like a, a smooth peachy king thing and I'm here to tell you the Christian life is a blessing and I'm thankful for the Lord Jesus I have a joy in the Lord and I pray that you do as well but it is very challenging today to live out the Christian life in this world there's evil around us there's things that happen in our lives that are not easy um, a couple of years ago my daughter was on life support that was not easy by the grace of God she's a miracle but you know what that did not change my faith other than growing me. It did not stop me from believing. It, it only just pushed me further to my Lord Jesus. And that's what me and my wife did. We just pressed on and looked forward to Jesus, recognizing that he is our hope. But John 16, Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And so when you look at the Christian life, 
recognize it takes self-denial and that's not a popular message today there's many that are opposite messages that are being preached out there today but God wants us to be denying ourselves to take up the cross and follow him look at the Bible says in Galatians 2 20 Paul said this if anybody can learn this very valuable thing of being crucified with Christ as well as denying himself the Apostle Paul would be one of that because he was a murderer before he got saved and he met Jesus on the Damascus Road and he had to learn who you know who Jesus was but he had to deny himself and Galatians 2 20 look what Paul says I have been crucified with Christ I m no longer live it is no longer I who live but Christ who lives in me and the life which I now live in this flesh I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me Paul got the concept of self-denial being crucified with Christ letting him live through us and letting our sinful desires or sinful passions be crucified with Christ our sinful ways be crucified with Jesus that we might live by faith in the Son of God and we might live through Jesus Christ who gave himself for for us and and so when you are crucified with Christ recognize as Jesus lives in you you're you're called to deny yourself to be crucified daily in him and recognize that Jesus must live through us and live in us to be a Christian but live through us to empower us to live the Christian life secondly as a Christian I want you to recognize that we are called to be in this world but not of the world and in doing so I want to read out of Romans chapter 12 as Paul mentions there as a Christian is called not to be conformed to this world but he says look what he says here in Romans 12 I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable to God which is your reasonable service look what he says here mark this verse 1 and 2 look what he says in verse 2 and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God listen God does not want us to be conforming to the sinful ways of the world he wants a Christian to be transformed by the Word of God transformed by Jesus Christ transformed by the Holy Spirit as we renew our minds in him in the in the Word of God in Jesus as we renew our minds that you may prove what is a good and acceptable and perfect will of God you want to know the will of God for your life deny yourself get to know Jesus first but deny yourself take up your cross follow Jesus but be obedient to his commands be obedient what he tells you to do and I believe the Lord will show you as you're not being conformed to the world you're being transformed by the renewing of your mind guess what God is going to show you the purpose that he has for your life the calling that he has on your life callings that he has on your life but you need to put God first you need to live for him and live out your Christian life through Jesus Christ and allow him to change you and transform you into that new person daily and that will never end until we go be with the Lord in heaven that transformation that change that God does in your life is it's every day but that self-denial that I'm crucified with Christ daily that happens every day you have to have that perspective and that mindset but not being conformed to the world don't listen to what the sinful world tells you you listen and let us listen to what God's Word and what Jesus tells us to do in his word because God wants us to be obedient to his command and what he tells us to do and some of those commandments you know Matthew 28 Jesus gave us the Great Commission it's not the great suggestion let me just say this it's a great commandment to go and make disciples of all nations as you and I know Jesus Christ 
we are called to make disciples and tell others about Jesus. Um, I go witnessing on a regular basis. I also do crusades and revivals on a regular basis. And of course, my television broadcast every week, I do here, and I share the gospel everywhere that I go. And I, I've just had some folks write me and say, Pastor Jim, would you do a video on how to share the gospel? Be looking for that in my future videos. I will indeed give you perspective on how to share the gospel and how to share your faith, as well as how to make disciples as Jesus commanded from the Word of God. And so we will look at that in the coming weeks ahead. But I wanted to make mention of that because Jesus calls Christians to know Him and to make Him known and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I will share with you how to share the gospel. What is the gospel? We will look at all those important things. But I want you to see what Jesus said here in Matthew 28, uh, verse 18. He says, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Verse 19 through 21, Jesus says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. Amen. And so Jesus, he gave the great commandment. And let me just say, as Christians, we are called to live out loud, so to speak, to live the gospel, to live Jesus in a world that is very loud with sin. We are called to make disciples and share the life-giving message of Jesus Christ with people. And you know what? It's great because when you're connecting with people, you can build relationships and connect with them just like Jesus did. You can start um, conversations just like Jesus did and talk to people and relate with them, but recognizing that we don't want to disregard or dis disobey the Word of God. We want to obey what God told us to do, which is to preach His Word and not compromise His Word. And Paul said that. He said, I became all things to all men that I could save some. You know, he was with the Jews. He was with the Gentiles. Whoever he was with, he would always share the gospel, but not deny or compromise the gospel or Jesus Christ. He would always lift up Jesus and his word. I want to encourage you to be a witness, to be a light, to shine the gospel, to shine Jesus brightly to your co-workers, to your school, to your neighbors, everyone that you come in contact with. Because God calls us as Christians to be called to go out there and share the good news. And I encourage you, Jesus said, go therefore into all the world, preach the gospel and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's an exciting blessing at my church. We've actually been able to baptize people on a regular basis, and people are coming to faith in Christ at some of our outreaches on a weekly basis, as well as at church, people are coming forward. But you know what? It's so important, too, to follow up on new believers, to help them to understand the Scripture, give them a Bible, encourage them to pray, encourage them to get into fellowship at a Bible-teaching church, as well as to put Jesus first in their life and to deny themselves these very things that we're talking about in this message. We as Christians need to obey the Word of God and need to obey what God tells us to do. And when we do, it's a blessing. It's an honor to honor our Lord. And it's a blessing to see the work of God take place in our lives when we are obedient to what Jesus commanded us to do several years ago. And I encourage you, those words that Jesus said even thousands of years ago are still pertinent today and so important today. We need to put those words of Jesus that he calls us into practice because God's word is alive and it will never pass away. And the words of Jesus are just as true when he said them 2,000 years ago as they are today. And so we need to honor what God tells us to do and what Jesus tells us to do because he is God in human flesh. But Jesus said to go ye therefore to all the world, preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, but teaching them to obey his commands. Let me encourage you to not only share the gospel with someone, but if they accept Christ as their savior and they make a decision 
where they put their faith in Jesus Christ and they pray to receive and believe in Jesus Christ, I want to encourage you to get their contact information and give it to your pastor, give it to your local church to make sure that they follow up on that new believer. But you too, make sure that you connect with that new believer and make sure that you're helping them and teaching them to obey the Lord's commands. And get them in plugged into your church. Hopefully they have a discipleship class that they can take. At my church we have a weekly discipleship class that goes on as new believers are coming to faith in Christ. We are actually plugging into that class. Uh, and in weeks to come I might share a few things that I share in those classes to help you in your local church and your community wherever you live to share the Word of God and make disciples. And, and so Jesus says here, He says, that ultimately we're to teach, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the age. I want to encourage you that Jesus is with us in the Christian life. I want to encourage you that Jesus is with you no matter what you go through in this life. That Jesus is with you in the midst of the storms as well as the midst of the blessings of life. But I want to encourage you, when you're making disciples, when God is making disciples ultimately, because Jesus is the one who does this, we're called to point people to Jesus. As God is doing that work, what a blessing to know that we're not alone doing this. It's Jesus. It's Jesus has called us to, to go with the Great Commission, the Great Commandment, but it's Jesus that will empower us and give us the wisdom from His Word to teach these new disciples to obey His commands. John 14, 15, Jesus says, if you love me, you're going to obey my commands. So I encourage you to obey the word of God and make disciples as Jesus calls you and believers everywhere to make disciples of all nations. And I'm so blessed in the body of Christ that the gospel is for every generation. The gospel of Jesus Christ is for every culture. The gospel of Jesus Christ breaks down barriers, amen? Jesus breaks down barriers. Let me just say, in the body of Christ, we are one. In Christ, we are covered by the blood of Jesus. We are one body. And I'm grateful for Jesus being the head of the body of Christ. Thank you, Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. And so invite people to come to Christ, share the gospel with them, and make disciples. That's one of our callings as believers that God calls us to, to make disciples as He's called us to, the great commandment. Another thing that I want you to, to recognize is don't get trapped in the things of the world. I alluded to it a little bit in the Romans 12 verses 1 and 2 verse, but I want you to see that the writer of Hebrews, chapter uh, Hebrews actually, chapter 12 verse 1, and, and says, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so uneasily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amazing. The Word of God here tells us clearly, as we've been surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight that would hinder our progress and let us run with endurance. I want to encourage you, the, the Christian ought to run with endurance looking at Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. The author and the f finisher of our faith. We need to look to Jesus. When, when you think about Peter on the water, as he was walking to him, he took his eyes off of Jesus and he began to look at the water and the Bible says he began to sink. And then he cried out, Jesus save me. And Jesus said, oh ye of little faith. You know, that's what happens. You know, we can, you know, so quickly get our eyes off of the Lord and that's we, when we begin to sink, spiritually speaking, where, where our eyes are not on the right things. We need to be on Jesus at all times. We need to focus on Him, setting our eyes on the goal of Jesus and looking at Him because He is the author and the finisher of our faith. But I would encourage you to not get entangled 
and and ensnared, trapped by the sin and and the the sinful ways of the world. Don't get trapped because the enemy Satan loves to trap people. He loves to distract people. He loves to get people to to think about other things rather than God. God wants you to obey him. God wants you to obey the word of God. God wants you to be set free and made free in him. Don't get caught up and ensnared in the things of the world. Live out your life in Christ and let his life live through you. And don't get trapped in the snares and and those things. We're surrounded. Look at the, the writer says in Hebrews. We're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. And I believe those witnesses are believers that have gone before us that are looking down, even though they're looking down from heaven. I don't know what that fully in, includes and what it would look like. Um, but I will tell you, I believe they're part of the witnesses that are looking on, cheering us on. I believe Jesus is looking on at us at all times and he's cheering us on. The Holy Spirit, God the Father, cheering us on. But I believe, you know, even believers here on earth are looking at us and cheering us on. We have a great cloud of witnesses that are looking at us even now as we live today that might not be Christians. They're looking at us. They're witnessing our lives. So we need to represent the Lord Jesus. And you know, your coworker at work is looking at you, how you react to things, how you work. Your your coworker that writes home with you is looking at you, how you drive in traffic. Let's honor the Lord. As we think about the things that God has called us to do as believers, may we recognize that we can only be a Christian with Jesus. We need Christ to be a Christian. And if in closing today, if you're not right with God, you don't know that you're a Christian. You don't know that Jesus Christ lives inside of your heart. I want to invite you to repent of your sins. As the Bible says to turn from your sins and turn to Christ, that times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord. I want to encourage you to get right with God right now because we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God, as the Bible says. The scripture tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God can forgive you. God can restore you. God can make you a new person in Jesus Christ, but only you can believe and put your faith and trust in him. You've heard the good news of the gospel. The bad news is we all have sin and we deserve the wrath of God. We've broken the commandments and the commandments that he's told us not to do or, or not to break, we've all broken them. James 2.10 says if, you've, if you have offended one point of the law, you've offended all of it. We've all sinned before God. We need salvation in him. And you, we must recognize that we must need a savior. And Jesus Christ, God in human flesh, is that savior. He is a savior of mankind, the only one. And there will be no other savior again. Jesus Christ is the only Savior that can save. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. He's the only way that you can be right with God. He's the only way that you can be on your way to heaven. He's the only way, the truth, and the life. If you're not ready to stand before God, if you don't know, if you were to die right now, that you would go to heaven, would you put your faith in Jesus Christ right now? Pray with me to receive Christ, as the Bible says, for whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Pray with me right now. Pray, make this prayer your prayer. Mean it from your heart. God will hear you. Pray with me now. Lord Jesus, I know that I've sinned, but I believe you are the Son of God who died for me. Jesus, come in and be my Savior, my Master, and my friend. I put my faith in Jesus Christ to save me now. Fill me with the Holy Spirit and make me a child of the living God. I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. I repent and I turn from my sins. And I believe that you died for me, Jesus that you defeated death and arose again on the third day. So Jesus, come in and live inside of me and fill me now with the Holy Spirit of God and make me a Christian. 
In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you just prayed with me to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, would you call me right now? You see the number on the screen, 1-800-973-5543. Once again, 1-800-973-5543. You just gave your life to Jesus Christ. You just got right with God. You want, you just, the, the heavens, the angels in heaven are rejoicing right now because your decision, you just repented of your sins. I'd love to know about it. Call me right now, 1-800-973-5543. 1-800-973-5543. Listen, if you would like to donate and give to our ministry on a monthly basis, or even give a love gift toward Power to Change Crusades, you can go on our website right now Power the number two change. Please notice the number two. Power the number two change dot org, and you can give a love gift or a monthly gift on PayPal to Power to Change Crusades. You're going to see a donate button on our website. Please give as the Lord will lead you. But all gifts are tax deductible, and they are given for the gospel of of Jesus Christ to keep this gospel going around the world through the ministry of Power to Change Crusades with Pastor Jim Doherty. I thank you for watching this broadcast today. And listen, if you need prayer, also call us right now at 1-800-973-5543. Even a Bible question, leave a message for us. We'd love to get to know what how God is working in your life. If you have a testimony that God has done in your life, write us, call us. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching, and in our next broadcast, we will look at what it means to truly live out our lives for Jesus Christ and be a Christian today. I encourage you to look out for that broadcast in the next week or two, and I pray God's blessing upon you. Let's pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, bless all those that are listening. Help us to live out our Christian life for Jesus Christ and you to empower us to live the Christian faith. Thank you for all that you've called us to and the ability and the power to live these things out. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Have a great day and week wherever you are.